My name is Craig Sell, and I welcome you to the Pace Insight Series, sponsored today by Avanta Solutions and Numerical. The subject is utilizing rich call data, RCD technologies, to brand and enhance campaigns. Today, we will discuss how businesses can now leverage RCD technology to display a brand name and logo to their customers. We will cover the basis from what the technology is, where it's available, who's using it, and what to consider when evaluating brand calling for your outbound communications. On this Pace Insight, we are joined by Frank Pennato, Chief Executive Officer of Avantive Solutions, and Rebecca Johnson, Founder and CEO of Numerical. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Rebecca. Morning, Greg. Good morning. Well, Rebecca, let's get it kicked off with you. And uh, let's just start with what is RCD technology? Yeah, it's a good place to start with just defining the terms before we dive into the value. So RCD, um, and we're going to use words interchangeably with branded calling as well, but RCD specifically is rich call data. And uh, we also see this in the texting called RCS. Um, so it's that RC, the rich call. What does that mean? Um, it's the information that enhances and brings more information to the consumer via the channel that it's being delivered down. So specifically for voice calls, rich call information is going to look like a logo on a device. It could be the name of the entity calling. Uh, we also see call intent can be displayed and also some verification information. So it's, it's really the concept around driving more information to consumers so that they can trust the channel that they're using to communicate with the business that they're engaged in. Extraordinary. So Rebecca, where is this technology available today? So when we focus on where it's available, I also focus on where it's not. <laughs> That's equally important. Uh, where it's available, uh, as I mentioned, is for the voice channel. So, you know, via, you know, phone calls. Where we have limitations on this technology is at the endpoint where the information will be displayed. And there are limitations based on the operating system of the device, whether we're talking Apple or Android. Uh, also the type of device, um, if anybody's out there like my dad who still has a flip phone, uh, you're not gonna be able to see this rich call information. Um, so there are limitations with regards to the reach uh, to consumers, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't take advantage of this technology. But we should be aware of the limitations, but what's really good about this is that uh, the, the device makers and the carriers who are offering up this information display are constantly working on expanding that reach. And that's just technology. It's going to continue to evolve. Yeah, if, I could, if I could add to that, you know, the industry is relatively new and what I'd argue is fragmented. So to Rebecca's point, um, cobbling together a solution that is able to leverage this, you know, the current fragmentation is, um, is you know, part of what we'll talk about today. But as, as standards develop and technology evolves and the market adopts it, we should hopefully see a more ubiquitous or uniform approach to, to delivery. So uh, these are the challenges of being a kind of an early adopter. Yeah, absolutely. Frank, is anyone out there actually using RCD in a real world sense, or is this all future looking technology? So um, partnering with Numerical and many of our clients, uh, we've, we've effectively deployed it on several, several of our current client base um, with, uh, with, with, with broad success. So um, <clears throat> primarily the focus has been on outbound telemarketing, including uh, B2C and B2B, interestingly enough slightly different use cases, slightly different results. So we, you know, we see that the value in an outbound world, we're also in process of testing it on some customer service inbound care, where you're not necessarily generating a lot of outbound calls, but if they are a return call, there is a lot of value in making sure that um, the, the, the customer who reached out to you in the first place knows that you're in fact returning a, a call on a, either a scheduled time frame or you know, just recognizing that the brand is in fact calling them back. Interesting. So Frank, what kind of results have you seen from these early adopter campaigns? So you know, fascinating as it may sound, we didn't know what to expect. <laughs> Rebecca and I kind of said, hey, let's just pilot this and find a client or two that are interested in, in kind of going forward. Um, you know, there is some published data that you can read, um, anecdotal at best, 
not necessarily rich in detail. So we started off by making sure that we designed the experiment, experiments appropriately, outlined specifically what metrics we wanted to capture. And over time, we're able to collect, you know, at this point, several million phone calls worth of data and try to understand the trends and the outcomes. Um, what we're seeing, Craig, is um, either neutral live answer rates. So initial th theories was you'd see either, either an increase in live answer rates because they'd understand, you know, a consumer would understand which brand is, is being, he's calling them. Uh, we found that that live answer rate is impacted by right off or right time or brand affinity. So a brand loyalist may be more apt to answer the phone or if they understand that the brand calling them perhaps has a sales offer, they say, hey, it's not really the right time for me. I'll choose not to answer at this time. Um, but ultimately, when you take into account that a brand loyalist is, in fact, probably going to answer the phone call, they're very interested in what the brand has to say, we saw some material increases in sales performance. And we'll, we'll use an example of sales per hour, or SPH uh, is often commonly um, used. And we, you know, depending on the campaign, we've seen anything from 5 to 25% increases. Uh, we've seen higher conversion rates. Uh, we've seen higher first call closes. So the first time we called the consumer, they in fact chose to uh, consummate the deal. And we believe a lot of that is related to, as, as, as Rebecca mentioned earlier, the trust. They know who's calling them. Therefore, that initial barrier or the resistance to the sales agent is, is minimized and is set up for an incredibly more productive phone call. So uh, we're very, very pleased um, with the results. Now, obviously, there's a cost to deliver the service. So you have to keep that in mind that these benefits come at the investment. So uh, we've ultimately seen a, a, a positive ROI. Absolutely. Um, additional, yeah, move on to the next question. Sorry, I was sure, there. No problem. So, so what, what is something surprising that you learned from the campaigns that you've deployed uh, so far with the caller ID name and logo? So one thing, Craig, that we thought about early on when we were kind of developing the metrics we wanted to look at, uh, we said, hey, would net promoter score be impacted by this? You know, it's kind of odd at, at the onset of, of an exercise like this, but we're very, very focused on net promoter score. We're very, very focused at those interactions with the customers and they are meaningful to the brand. So it took a lot of time to collect the data because there's a delay, right? So the interaction happens, the post-call surveys are sent out, and then we have to kind of work through the data. But ultimately, when we were able to compile net promoter score on uh, customers receiving rich call data versus not receiving rich call data, we saw a very meaningful increase. And to me, the, the level of increase was, was very meaningful. Um, we believe, again, it's because brand loyalists are predisposed to answer the call. Therefore, we saw a higher conversion rate and ultimately a higher net promoter score. Second thing that I was, I'll call it surprised to understand was um, customers or callees, people that we were calling, didn't necessarily mention anything that they had received a logo or name on their phone. The interactions just began perhaps just a more friendly, more engaging manner, but they never said it out loud. Hey, that's pretty cool. I see the name uh, on my phone. Because recall most people's phones when they ring, the only time the name shows up is if it's in your address book, so a friend or you know, somebody you put in there. So now subconsciously, we're feeling like the market's adopting or getting used to that, that a logo or a brand can be presented on the phone. And it's not, you know, it's not a kitschy thing. It's not some type of uh, unique experience that um, will be a novelty. We believe that subconsciously people are like, hey, that's a brand I wanna speak to and they're engaged. So what we did is we did a very extensive and detailed analysis of all our voice recordings. We have, um, we have a, a pretty intense voice analytics platform. And I had the team say every call that had rich call data, look to see if the customer actually said anything. Did they mention anything about, you know, keywords like logo or brand name or anything that kind of remotely sounded like that, we found none of it. So we think of this as a visceral reaction, a subconscious reaction that the customer says, hey, a brand I have an affinity with is calling me, I'm gonna pick up. 
and it's going to start off with um, you know a lower barrier, a, a, a level of trust, and ultimately you know a fruitful outcome for both parties. Rebecca, I would say from yeah, from my perspective, it wasn't so much a surprising but a pleasant, unexpected lesson learned is the value of having a partnership where Avantov, if you just mentioned Frank, is just focused on supporting his customers with referral data, understanding the consumer interaction. And he didn't have to think about the complexities of integrating with the various different rich call data providers. Um, so being able to have that free space to just focus on what's the value of leveraging this tool, I think, you know, kind of was an unexpected uh, learning here is that, okay, you know what, maybe we should partner with somebody who can manage that. We live it at Numerical day in, day out. It is not a simple thing to integrate with. You absolutely could do this on your own, but you're going to have to staff up for it. Um, and then are you really focused on where you should be focusing, which is really what's the consumer interaction and how are we driving our goals and our metrics? So Rebecca, what are some considerations brands out there should keep in mind as they're evaluating whether or not branded calling might be a right for them? I think you have to look at, can you support it first? Uh, Avanta absolutely made an investment and that's what this is. This is an investment in leveraging uh, a tool or technology that's out there for consumer engagement. So you need to understand what that investment is. It is not a turn it on and walk away. It doesn't work that way. You really have to make decisions when to use rich call information, when not to use rich call information because it comes at a premium price. Um, this is the, you know, it's adding additional costs, right? Uh, so uh, you really need to understand what you're developing, why you're doing this with regards to branding. Don't buy into it's a silver bullet and all your contact rates will immediately turn around and it's, it's just happy land. No, it's not. It just really isn't. Uh, so you got to be real strategic and prepared and ready and set some resources aside to be able to leverage it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I could add to that, so, you know, to Rebecca's point, um, it's a you're kind of a brave new world. We, we embarked on this not having a lot of, of data. We, you know, kind of, well, we'll say designed the experiment. We said, here's some metrics we want to look for. But then we had the technological challenges, which we leveraged uh, numerical pretty heavily with to, to resolve. And that included API development, uh, uh, carrier pens, but ultimately, we had to crunch a lot of numbers and do ROI analysis. And to Rebecca's point, what we found is um, certain programs um, did really well. And it's all about the traditional marketing approach, right time, right offer. Yeah. Uh, just because I put rich call data on doesn't necessarily mean someone's going to buy a, a product that isn't offered to them at the right time or perhaps is an offer that they're, that they're in a position to accept. So it's, not a, it's, not, you know, it's not a panacea. Um, Understanding those those nuances specifically around the investment is you know you know each brand is going to have to really do some do some work do some testing but ultimately I'm very confident that there are very specific use cases that you can see a material improvement notwithstanding the initial investment. So insightful, thank you, Rebecca. How do you see this technology become more widely adopted in the future? So when we're talking about that rich call experience, as I mentioned earlier, uh, even on the SMS side, uh, there was an announcement made uh, one over the summer here where Google uh, made an, a, a deal with each of the major wireless carriers, uh, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile to offer their Google uh, SMS messaging, which comes with rich call information. So we're seeing that shift to have more channels accept this data. It does require standards. It does require some technology updates, but um, we're seeing the big players, they're moving forward uh, and they're adopting it. I believe that there will be other channels that we use and engage where they will leverage this information. Uh, we really need to see this even in social media level as well on messaging, right? So there's all these places where uh, communication and engagement can uh, happen. And this approach of verification and rich information is just gonna become a standard. Eventually, I think new communication channels will just automatically have this. It won't be anything that they add later. It'll just be part of our way of communicating. Yeah, I agree with Rebecca. I, you know, I'll go back to the fragmentation of the industry, the you know, the iOS versus the Android operating systems of different nuances. 
Google's taken a very strong leadership position in the rich kind of communication sector, both on the phone calls and you know their their new version of RCS SMS. Um, I see a blending of the two. I can also envision very shortly seeing channel jumping on the same interaction between a phone call and a RCS or SMS. Um, I see the carriers, I see the hardware developers all over time kind of rallying around a standard. Um, you know, there are some standards already, the RCD Passport, for example, and Sturshagen um, that's out there. But you know, we're, we're early on in this game and it's important for, um, for us to provide the value to our, to our clients, making sure we're evaluating it, testing it, and, and looking at um, whether there's a, there's a viable business need for it. And partnering with Numerical helps us do that um, a lot more faster, uh, more efficiently, and, and be able to turn, turn data around very quickly. Absolutely. Well, my final question for you both this morning is what's the number one benefit you think this new, ne new technology will bring to the contact center industry on the whole? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in, Rebecca, please add to this. Um, I think actually a word that Rebecca used early on was just trust. So in a world where despite other regulatory changes, there's still a lot of spam or scam calls coming through. Uh, brands who want to get in contact with their customers or prospects are really fighting an uphill battle to cut through the noise. So bringing trust back to the phone call, um, in my opinion, it, it, you know, is the number one, number one aspect of this. And then setting a call up for success. So now that I've developed the trust of knowing who the brand is, person answering the phone is now predisposed to truly listen and understand what the offer is or what the engagement's about. Therefore, the outcome is going to be much more favorable. Whether it's a sale or not, you know, ultimately you're, you're reinforcing that, that impression, that, that brand impression uh, favorable to, to a customer. And then right time, right offer, if you combine that with rich call data, you know, we've seen just su substantial increases in, in sales performance, um, including um, you know, that, that, that all important net promoter score after the call, call end. So you know, when applied properly and in a cost-effective manner, um, you know, we, we, we see and we expect to continue to see favorable outcomes. And, and just adding on to that, obviously trust is there. I think specifically for the contact center, what we're doing is also removing a hurdle uh, without having this uh, functionality. You know, it is the contact rates are impacted negatively. So just having this as another option to remove that hurdle to start the conversation, that's the key here. Uh, so I think, you know, between those two, how you then leverage it is really up to each uh, brand, each contact center and the value that this technology brings them. Yeah, awesome. Incredible. Is there anything else either of you would like to add today? No, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll go on record that I think the partnership with Numerical helped us move very quickly uh, to support our clients. And we, uh, in combination with Numerical, <laughs> wrestled a lot of technolo technological barriers. So uh, right now, I mean, we believe there's a market, there's a marketable, mm -hmm or sellable product out there. And um, I encourage all listeners to, to take a hard look at this and see if there's an opportunity for them to use it in their, in their uh, call center. Yeah, well, thanks for that, Frank. And I, I think it comes back to, you know, my background is working with uh, enabling contact centers. And I always said, you know, my favorite places to visit were the different contact centers across uh, the U.S. and I always said nobody could throw a better party than a contact center because those cubicles can be decorated <laughs> incredibly and there's always great candy and I just I love the people I love the jobs that this industry provides um, you don't have to have a master's degree um, even you know there are some CEOs in this industry that started with just a GED, right? And, and, and it gives you an opportunity to just work and put in the hard work and make your way up. So that's really where the passion comes from with regards to tackling the challenges that integrating this technology has. I really want it to be an easy button. I don't want this to be another headache or another massive investment for resources and a distractor from really focusing on what the contact center should be doing. So I, I appreciate those words back because that's exactly what 
everyone at Numerical, we come from this industry in this space and we just, we want to make it easy to be able to leverage these technologies. Yeah, and uh, I want to go on record thanking Pace and Craig for you to, for coordinating this and thank you uh, for partnering with me, Rebecca. Awesome. Well, I want to thank our viewers for listening today. And I want to thank, again, of course, about the solutions and numerical. You both have been incredible get, guests, and, and I really appreciate uh, your time today. Uh, once again, I am Craig Sell with Pace, and listen in for the next big insight coming your way soon. Thank you all.